Good afternoon and welcome to RCI's Navshikhar channel. I welcome all our viewers to our show today. Our today's topic of discussion is the role of various professionals like teachers, psychologists, social workers, etc. in mental retardation. And we have with us our expert today. She is a lecturer from NIMH New Delhi, Dr. Usha Grover. Ma'am, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, I will first give a briefing of about uh, mental retardation. This is a case which has come about age today and there are many people who have a lot of knowledge about it today. So, there are various professionals who have come into this area and these professionals play a key, key role in uh, development of mental retardation. So, I would just like to ask ma'am first, ma'am there are various services which are demanded by these mental retard patients. So, what, give, could you just give a briefing about these services that are provided? Yeah, um, thank you first of all. Uh, you asked me a question that people with mental retardation yeah. require various services. Yeah. So, why do you think they require so many services? Awesome. Well, you have asked, asked me a very relevant question. Uh, well, if you have our students would have seen children with mental retardation, children with mental retardation not only have mental retardation, along with that they have many other problems. Say for example, sometimes you know most of them by and large they have speech and language problem. Some of them have physical problems, some of them you know they have problems with uh, uh, you know hearing or sometimes you know other problems also emotional problems, psychological problems, behavioral problems and medical problems. So, when we are talking about the habilitation of persons with a mental retardation, obviously we can't say that uh, you know a uh, special educator is enough because she is going to teach the child. What about the other needs of the child? As I just said, they have other needs as well apart from their need of educational uh, studies you know. So, uh, because of their other needs, as I just said, they have behavioral problems, they have medical problems. Say, for example, mental, by and large, again, we have seen uh, children with mental retardation, they have epilepsy, you know, epileptic uh, uh, fits. So, we need to have uh, doctor services. So, children with uh, mental retardation have often have behavioral problems. So, we need the services of a psychologist. So, likewise, you know, we also need the services of therapists say for example, if a person have physical problems, if a person has you know mobility problems, hand function problems, so we require the services of physical therapist or occupational therapist. So, that is what you wanted to ask me. So, keeping in view the uh, associated condition of these persons with mental retardation which they have along with mental retardation, the services of uh, various professionals are required. Now, let us have a look at the chart, what are the various services our persons with mental retardation require. As you can see on the screen, uh, there are many services persons with mental retardation require. First of all, you know they require early detection and intervention services. Uh, you can see on the screen, as you can see on the screen, uh, there are services like early detection and intervention services. Uh, as the name suggests, you know uh, how to intervene early. First of all, to detect a child with mental retardation, which only doctors, pediatricians can do it. And if at all they have detected, then how to provide intervention services. They require medical services if there is some medical problems. As I just said, any medical problem like you and I have, you know, child uh, is born and is having diarrhea problem or some fever or whatever medical problem that we need doctors. Psychological services, we need psychologists as the child grows, you know, uh, accepting the child. Uh, you know by the parents that he has mental retardation is a tough thing, it is very tough. So, therein the psychologists play a big role, how to uh, make the parents accept that their child is having a problem. You know as you very well know unless we accept the child's needs and unless we accept the child as he is, we are unable to provide him the services he requires. And uh, next is that um, physical and occupational services. As I said, the child may have some problems, 
uh, either you know he is not able to sit properly or when he is small he is having problem with his head control or you know uh, when he is old he is having problem with his hand function or he is a problem with his gait, his uh, you know mobility and other things. So for that we need the services of therapist either he is a PT, physiotherapist or occupational therapist. We talk about it later when we are talking about the role of various professionals. Then we have speech and language uh, hearing services as I just said most of our children with mental retardation have speech and language problem. So we do require services of an audiologist and speech therapist. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's what I was going to tell you that they require services of various professionals, then special education services. Education, what kind of education, what uh, skills the child requires to uh, live uh, his life independently. So that's the role of a special educator, teaching the child with mental retardation all those skills which he requires in day-to-day -day life. Uh, say for example, how to eat, how to read, how to write, things like that which will be required to, uh, to study and also to uh, live his day-to-day -day life. The next vocational services, as the child grows older, you know, uh, he finishes schools, obviously like you and I, we learn work and then we are put in the world of work, you and I started working. But before they are put in the world of work, they need to be trained in some vocations. So what we call, you know, vocational services. So they do require vocational services as well. Which vocation they should go in, you know, what kind of uh, vocation would be suited best for his ability. All those things, for all those things, the vocational services are required. Then services provided by the government. As we just said, you know, uh, it's a it's a nation problem, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with the children or looking after with the person, looking after the person with mental retardation is our uh, our problem. It's a nation's problem. Now there are certain benefits and schemes available from the government of India. Uh, uh, so what are those, you know, schemes? What are the services provided by the government that also? required for persons with mental retardation so that they are aware what are the services uh, available uh, from the government of India. Then information services. Now what is available? What is available for people with mental retardation? You know sometimes uh, parents are not even aware that there are special schools available. They are not even aware there are some benefits available. They are not even aware what is this condition all about and what is their role. And if they don't know what is their role towards this child, then how would community would know their, what is their role? So the awareness services, you know, how can we do awareness services through media, like what we are doing now? You know, what is this condition? How we should treat with this condition? Treating in the sense, handle, you know, uh, treat in the sense, what kind of language we should use? How would, do we, uh, you know, address these children? And what are the various needs? and. Uh, what kind of sensitivity we should have, what kind of positive attitude we should have towards the children. All these things should be given by media and then what is available, where is the school uh, and where are the uh, you know national agencies, where are the non-government uh, uh, non agencies and what is available where you know. All those information about all these things is very very important. As I said, uh, uh, you know, many of uh, the people, not only parents, even the professionals are not aware what all is available for persons with mental retardation. So that is uh, why uh, information service is also required. Community-based services, again, eventually we all know when the child is born in the community and after we have taught him, after we have provided services according to the needs of the person, he is eventually going to be set in the community. He is eventually going to live in the community. So what are the various community services he would be requiring? You know, that also is another service. Social work services, you know. Again, social work like... Um, Working with the families, we need people who uh, who can who can bridge the gap between the family and the services. Uh, you know, social work uh, workers who can give education to the community, tell them what is their role. Again, bringing a link between the community and people with mental retardation. And again, uh, benefits are there, but how to uh, how to help these people to avail those benefits? That's another, you know, what are the various forms you have to fill in? Where do you have to go and collect the form? All those nitty gritty of all these things. So social worker, uh, social workers are required to give that. Then recreational services. Um, 
again like any other person persons with mental retardation also require services for their recreation for their leisure time because they are also human beings like you and i so now what are those services available can they use the same swimming pool can they use the same malls or uh, you know pvrs or uh, and if at all they can use are they disabled friendly so can they use all those so these are other services they require and if they want to use how they can do it so these are the various services um, persons with mental retardation would require if you are talking about the habilitation and rehabilitation uh, process for these children yeah mama you just talked about the families of these people of these patients with mental retardation mam these families were found it's very difficult for them to cope up with these patients and with the societal pressures mm -hmm. so what exactly and they have a very uh, a lot of trust and faith in their uh, uh, doctors, doctors and their doctors. counselors so how would you recommend the strategies for these families to cope up with the societal pressures and everything well a uh, good question again now this is there is a procedure you know first of all as i just said when the child is born the parents go through various stages of acceptance it's not that the child is born then the parents have accepted they are there's a continuum of stages first is shock you know shock denial yeah. you know no and then you know again search starts when they're little bit okay and then so many other things and final stage is you know acceptance mm. so what i'm saying is a continuum is a scale like they start with shocking grieving and all those things denial and you know like why it is me all those things hurt pain and everything and finally they go to acceptance and some of them are stuck in between they never go to this end of acceptance but it's a role is like as i said this is how we have to work with the families we work with the families like as i said social worker and psychologist and all the professionals they work with the families to help the parents to help the family accept this child because unless as i just said whatever we do with the child if the person has not been able to accept the child with his needs whatever program they give is not going to be of any benefit because they say it's not beneficial yeah. why should we unnecessarily uh, you know spend time for this child so very good question you have asked so the and there are many coping mechanism there are a lot of research done on families and siblings and if this is uh, you know we have time maybe we'll discuss about that later but so as i just said uh, all of us play a big role in uh, talking with the uh, you know in helping the families to accept the child with mental retardation yeah So, ma'am, uh, now that you've told us about the families, the strategies of the families should follow. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, another question is that, uh, yeah, ma'am, the various uh, professionals. Can you just describe the various type of professionals, the various? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about. So, as you can see on the screen. Uh, we need to have the involvement of various profes professionals and that's the need of the hour you may think you know generally people think that uh, mental retardation if the child is born with if it is detected as early as that you know they will go to a doctor like doctor uh, will take care of him fine doctor will take care of the medical services fine but the, po the uh, point i'm stressing is that the not only require the services of a medical doctor but they do require other services also other service other uh, you know professional services so what are those as you can see on the screen it is a multidisciplinary team as you can see we require a social worker we require a speech therapist we require a teacher we require teacher meaning a uh, special educator or if they are in an inclusive setup we require regular school teacher then psychologist then parents then doctors there are other vocational instructors and so on who services are required on and off you know but these are the professional who are always team members when we are talking about habilitation of persons with mental retardation okay so now shall we go as you just said shall we discuss the role of each and every professional role of a psychologist uh i think our dsc students are exposed to psychologists in their institutions they would have seen psychologists you know taking cases and uh, assessing their iq and that is their main role you know psychologists are uh, the main purpose is to assess the child iq so that uh, 
uh, we can find out uh, whether the child is mentally retarded or not because that is one of the criteria of uh, finding out whether the child is retarded or not. And uh, so they use various IQ tests, whether it is Binet or it is progressive matrices or it is form board. Depending upon the child age and so many other things, a psychologist will decide which test she will have to use and she will give IQ score of a child, which will help others, because as I said, they are all connected, which will help school authorities to place the child in the school. Um, you know, uh, like whether he'll be placed in preschool, uh, preschool level, or he'll be placed at primary level, or he'll be placed at secondary level, depending upon his IQ and his age, uh, mental level and his uh, chronological level, it helps us in placement. Like where should he be placed in special school? So that is the main role of a psychologist. Yeah, and if you can see on the screen. To determine, I have written, to determine students' cognitive, academic, social, emotional and behavioral functioning. So that is the main role of a psychologist. Second, detailed analysis of students' strength and weaknesses. Third is plan strategies for academic and social behavioral problems as behavioral consultant. Then last of all, individual assistant to behavioral problems. So what we are saying, apart from his IQ assessment, psychologist is also involved in uh, behavioral uh, problems management. You know, like there are uh, many behavioral problems which are found in persons with mental retardation. Uh, say for example, you know, they, uh, uh, sometimes the kind of you know self injurious behavior they show you know beating themselves or pushing others so misbehavior or they are doing some odd behaviors or you know uh, sometimes they are uh, uh, very rebellious and sometimes they are into wrong behaviors you know so all kind of behaviors we have seen our children are uh, uh, sometimes engaged in so uh, the role of a psychologist is to assess the problem behavior as well. They not only assess the IQ level but also to assess the problem behavior and not only assess the behavior problem but also after assessing the behavior problem give a management plan like how to overcome this behavioral problem either eliminate it or reduce it right say for example if the problem is happening five times a day so that either she will like to totally eliminate it or reduce the uh, the, the the frequency uh, yeah the frequency of happening it okay so that is the role of a psychologist and individual assistant you know it basically they are uh, doing one to one problems and now when they are working with the parents obviously they work with the parents as well parents counseling students counseling that is also a, a role of a psychologist yeah we'll go now, to as you just spoke about psychologists and counseling mm -hmm. the parents they generally tend not to accept the student the children have got disability mm -hmm. so when do you think is the ideal time for them to go to counseling when do you think they should go for counseling okay very good question again for accepting the child we have counseling yeah. you know we have counseling sessions arranged for the parents like sometimes we feel our training is of no use whatever we are doing uh, with the child is not being carried home because parents are not willing to accept it uh, they are not agreeing with us okay. and they are not they are they don't have a strong belief that whatever we are we are doing will help the child on the contrary, they feel whatever we are doing is of no use. So that means they have not accept the child's strengths and weaknesses. So here comes the role of a psychologist to make him aware positively. It's not just the limitations, they, they also the strengths of a child. So it is up to the psychologist to use her counseling skills to make them aware well. You know, some children run very fast, some children run very slow, but this child who is running slow is very good in computers. That's a run, the child who runs very fast is not good in computer. So we all vary in our strengths and weaknesses. So this child is not able to uh, do the academics that fast or the, that efficiently as compared to other children, but he has this strength as this strength of doing, uh, of working on computers or this strength of working art and craft or 
singing or working on an instrument so this is how you know uh, the what kind of strategy what kind of counseling techniques they will use is up to the psychologist but as you said the very good question that unless as i said uh, the first priority the first task of a psychologist a psychologist and all of us is towards accepting the child as i said otherwise whatever program you are uh, doing with the child is of no value because unless i have belief unless i accept i'm just doing it and then whatever we are doing is not carried over at home because they are not at that level so it's going waste yeah so that is the role of a psychologist is their role to help the parents to accept but as you said it's not an easy job yeah it's not really an easy job we have to have we have to give many sessions and there are still many very many parents who are still fixated as i said they, they never come to that stage but gradually and gradually sometimes mother accepts but father doesn't accept then we have to bring in father but the sometimes father doesn't is not even willing to come so there are a lot of facets then we the psychologist has to adopt another techniques so it's it's not easy but there are solutions yeah okay have i answered your question yes ma'am completely okay um oh sorry okay then we come to role of a special, special educator, educator. now so after the psychologist has given uh, us the iq level of a child as i said we will place the child now there are various various levels in the school uh, keeping in view the child's chronological age and his mental age the levels are pre primary primary like we say pre primary primary secondary pre vocational and vocational and there are other classes primary a and pre vocational uh, b and primary b also so now keeping in view the iq of a child and his chronological age the child is placed in various classes now in the classes the classes are manned by a special educator so in other words a special educator uh, will have special students with mental retardation for whole day that means she is looking after these children uh, there are almost 7 to 10 children in one class and special educator's responsibility is to coordinate the services of various professionals but she is the on uh, uh, co- coordinator who will coordinate all the services whatever are required by a child and give those services so as you can see on the screen the role of a special educator is coordination of the services a student is required to receive so depending upon what are the various services the student requires she has to coordinate those if he is required to go to speech therapy at particular time it is her duty to send him and take the program so that she can also coordinate uh, that program in the class as well you know uh, so she, that is one second is assessment of the functional level <coughs> now what is the functional level academically what is the uh, uh, psycho educational level that is the duty of a um, special educator psychologist has given us just iq which will not help us to develop his individualized educational program in other words his training program in other words what he should be taught and when he should be taught and how he should be taught now this is the responsibility of a special educator first of all to find out what is his level in other words what is his functional level academically how much he can do in reading how much can he do in writing how much can he do in uh, uh, you know his daily living like his level in dressing or eating or uh, making beds or making chapatis or uh, you know all those things so this special educator will do iq assessment was done by a psychologist a special educator will find out his functional level to get a uh, behavioral profile of a child as to what are the various skills my child with special ed- uh, mental retardation uh, can do and what are the various skills my child is unable to do so that on the basis of whatever the child he can't do she will pick the goals for the child as i've written on the screen after the assessment of the functional level the next is developing and implementing ieps our students of dsc would fairly know what i'm talking about because we have already had a discussion about assessment and iep they all know what are the various tools we use for assessment of functional level they all know how do we go about preparing iep or they are in the process of developing iep these days 
I'm sure. And I think uh, most of them are in the process of, they have finished assessment and now right now they are developing IEP. They've written goals and objectives and now they are in the process of writing IEP. Ma'am, if I would just, what is the procedure of uh, assessment of an IEP, if you could just elaborate on that? Uh, well, as I just said, it's a different topic altogether, okay. which will take me, if I elaborate, it will just take me another one enough. hour. As I just said, in uh, all mentally handicapped children are different, you know, even when two of us are sitting, uh, if it was a normal class, my teacher will use a common book for both of us. Okay. But for mentally handicapped children, even when they have 60 IQ, 60 to 65 IQ, both the children are, are falling in that range, even then their functional level will vary. Okay. Maybe this child will be good in reading or maybe two letter word reading or three letter word li living but this child is reading sentences whereas writing I can't even write a single word single letter whereas you even can write two letter word so the functional level is different your fine motor skills are very good but my fine motor skills are not good on the contrary my verbal skills are very good so what I'm trying to tell you is that even when they are too mentally handicapped, they, f they are in the same class and <coughs> their level is different. different. So in order to deal with the child, we have to, uh, in order to take care of the needs of each child, we have to develop individualized education program. So individualized is the, is the underlying word and that is what, and it's a whole procedure, how to write IP, how to prepare IP, how to implement IP, for which is a separate Topic altogether, topic altogether uh, which is the heart of the special education. If a special educator, that's the main job of a special educator, assessing and developing IEP and implementing it and then evaluating it. So uh, you've already asked me this question. You can see on the screen role of special educators. I'll repeat again. Coordination of various services, as I said, the child will require many services. A special educator will jot down those services what a student would require and coordinate those services with other professionals. Second is assessment of the functional level. As I just said, it is her responsibility to uh, develop a functional profile, behavioral profile. Then second is developing his individualized educational program. After developing that, give direct, direct instruction, which is implementation of IEP, teaching IEP, and then after a stipulated time, evaluate what the child has achieved, and then accordingly refer to the next class or wherever. So this is the role of a special Which educator. Now, what about the other yeah. professionals that yeah. are involved? Yeah, I'm coming to that. Let's talk about uh, the next professional. But before I go on to that, as I said, a uh, special educator uh, play a pivotal role. She is, although uh, she is just one professional, but she has to coordinate. That is her main job, to provide with other professionals. I mean, to coordinate with other professionals. So what we have found while working with people with mental retardation, we have uh, found a special educator has to be a very, very responsible person. And as uh, we, what we found, there are certain qualities which we feel uh, should be there in a special educator and I would like to list those and in order to make it easy and interesting we have analyzed the word special you know so that our students can remember so that they can remember what all qualities I should have as a special educator as I said she has the she is uh, a person uh, who is keeping the child for the maximum hours of the school you know, most of the time the child stays with the special educator. She go, the child goes to specialist only for a brief period when they are going for other therapies. So what are those qualities? As you can see on the screen, I have uh, analy analyzed special. So S means sincere. Special educator has to be sincere. Yeah. Yeah. And sincere meaning we all know, sincerity. She has to work with sincerity. P means pleasing personality. Why I say that? A pleasing personality meaning she should be smiling, she should be approachable. Not that you know the way the teachers are frowning and uh, uh, why you have done this, why you have not done that. Then E means empathy. And to 
break so she should be empathetic, empathetic. yeah not sympathetic empathetic empathetic what is the difference sympathetic okay. is when you're sympathizing having pity for someone exactly. but empathetic is when you're understanding the problem and then exactly don't sympathize oh just because he is this i have to teach no this is right understand this is how we understand put yourself in his shoe this is how we understand and this is how i have to teach that is empathy okay and the next is uh, you have to be creative okay okay what is creative meaning now as i said and all of our students know the characteristics of persons with mental retardation and one of the characteristics is they are very lethargic they are not interested in studies you know they will forget soon they will lose their concentration so what we have to do is that uh, you know teach the same thing over and over and over again in other words they require repetition all the time now if we keep doing repeating the same thing again and again in the same manner what will happen our students will get bored and nobody will learn yeah as it is they are not willing to learn and if you may don't make your in teaching interesting they will not learn so what we say a teacher has to be very very creative creative same idea should be taught in 10 different ways and that is the requirement of a good special educator okay so ma'am till now we have spoken about the various services that are demanded by the mental retardation patients and the various professionals that are involved and the various and the families and the coping strategies which the families have to use with their children who've got mm -hmm. the problem of mental retardation then we spoke about the psychologists and the counselors and special educators and we were just discussing about how the qualities what are the qualities that a special educator should have so we will continue with this but now it's time for a short break so we'll see you after that yeah, you do it. This is Aparna. She loves chess and Shahrukh Khan. Her best friend is Swati. She also has visual impairment. La 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 This is Neeraj La hawa dheere dheere chal rahe He plays many instruments Suno jo kahani He loves Mohammad Rafi and cricket Ye kahani sadiyon purani hai ye kahani ha main suno He also uses crutches for mobility चंदा है तू मेरा सूरज है तू दिस इज राज तारा है तू जीती हूँ मैं बस तुझे देख कर विद हसबेंड एंड डॉटर शी लव कुकिंग एंड वॉचिंग टीवी She also has cerebral palsy. Look beyond the disability. Look at the person. ऑटिज्म एक व्यापक विकासात्मक विकलांगता है जिसके लक्षण जीवन के प्रथम तीन वर्ष में ही दिखाई पड़ते हैं जैसे असंगत खेल असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं शाब्दिक संकेतों पर अभिव्यक्ति न देना देखो ओपन ओपन करो ओपन ओपन करके ओपन ओपन नियमित कार्यक्रम परिवर्तन का विरोध करना एवं अवलोकनीय शारीरिक उच्च स्तरीय या निम्न स्तरीय क्रियाकलाप यूएनसीआरपीडी 2007 सेक्शन वन ऑफ आर्टिकल फोर निशक्तता के क्षेत्र में कार्यरत 
प्रोफेशनल के प्रशिक्षण पर महत्व देता है ऑटिज्म के क्षेत्र में सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाएं कार्यरत हैं जो भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद द्वारा पंजीकृत हैं सोसाइटी फॉर एडवांस स्टडी इन रिहेबिलिटेशन एक ऐसी ही गैर सरकारी संस्था है कनिष्क तेरह साल का एक ऑटिस्टिक बच्चा है जो इसी संस्था से प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है असंगत क्रियाएं कार्यकलापों में निरस्ता असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं जैसे बॉडी रॉकिंग और फिंगर रिगलिंग उसमें देखी जा सकती है उसे मैचिंग और पेस्टिंग पॉइंटिंग जैसी क्रियाएं सिखाई जाती हैं। तथा साथ ही साथ रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताएं जैसे खाना पीना कपड़े पहनना और व्यायाम संबंधी प्रशिक्षण दिया जाता है ऑटिस्टिक बच्चों को भिन्न भिन्न प्रकार की कार्यविधियां उनके स्तर के अनुसार सिखाई जाती हैं जैसे कुछ बच्चों के लिए कलरिंग विद इन वन एरिया मैचिंग एंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन फाइन मोटर स्किल्स आई हैंड कोऑर्डिनेशन कंसेप्ट ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स फ्रूट्स बॉडी पार्ट्स कलर्स पर जोर दिया जाता है तथा कुछ को प्रश्न पढ़ के उत्तर देने में और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं को पूरा करने में सक्षम बनाया जाता है इसके अलावा राइम्स डांसिंग सिंगिंग द्वारा लेजर एंड रिक्रिएशनल एक्टिविटीज में भाग लेने के लिए प्रोत्साहित किया जाता है इन सभी कार्यकलापों एवं प्रशिक्षण का एकमात्र उद्देश्य उन्हें स्वनिर्भर बनाना है ताकि ये डगमगाते पांव सक्षम बन जीवन के एक एक पायदान पर दृढ़ता से आगे बढ़े और अपनी मंजिल को पाले एक तारा टिमटिमाता उसने आकाश को छू लिया एक लौ जली कहीं उसने अंधकार को मिटा दी Welcome back after a break. Our discussion of today was on the role of professionals in the field of MR, that is mental retardation, and we had just spoken about the various services that are provided for the mental retardation patients, and about the psychologists and the role of social edu uh, special educators. So we were just discussing about the special educators, ma'am. What are the other qualities that are essential by of the special educators? So yeah, as you can see on this. Screen, you know, I have uh, listed the, as I said, I have analyzed special and I have listed the qualities of a special educator, which we have found are very, very important. And there are many others also, but these are the, the, the least required. You know, I think everybody should have these qualities. As I said, special, you can see on the screen, S means sincere, P means pleasing personality, and E means empathy. She should be empathetic. 
C means creative, I means intelligent, A means attitude, attitude as in positive attitude, L means laborious. So, uh, as I just said, a special educator should have pleasing personality. She is working with children uh, who are already not very keen to learn. And if you are always frowning and screaming and shouting and not, uh, you know, uh, pleasant with the children, I think they will not learn from you. That is the case with all the teachers and children, but more so with the children with special education because of their characteristics. So, I think a teacher should always be, uh, should always be smiling and should always be accessible, should always be ready to help the children. And as an intelligent uh, mean, uh, I mean that teacher ko sari knowledge honi chahiye kyunki har banda special educator nahi ban sakta hai there are specialized ways of teaching children with mental retardation which a teacher learns only after going through a course in special education to kehne ka matlab ye hai ki and uh, so only uh, unless they undergo that course they do not uh, you know imbibe those skills and competencies which are required for a special educator so knowledge uh, so, when I say that they should be intelligent, I, I mean to say they should have the knowledge of the field. And teaching mentally handicapped children is as scientific, as methodical as teaching other children. It is not that you can teach anything through these children, you can uh, teach any way you feel like to these children, it is not like that. There are set ways, set ways of assessment, standardized ways of uh, teaching, standardized ways of recording. So, there are ways of doing things which a special educator should know before dealing. Uh, um, what we have as you know seen in um, like uh, various schools that anybody, see it, they say that teaching children with mental retardation is so easy, anybody can teach. So, I will go, I am free, I would like to give my free services. Fine, they can give their free services, but unless they are aware of this procedure, this process of teaching mentally handicapped children, I think they can do, uh, you know, negative also. They can do blunders also as to, you know, making mistakes in teaching and which could be, which could really be harmful for our children. So, that is what I was trying to say. Otherwise, I was saying attitude, positive attitude. As I said, no sympathy, positive attitude meaning, yes, our children can learn, our children will learn. You know, positive attitude. Some people think, padna padana te inhone kuch hai nahi, to yehi kar lo, itna hi kafi hai, yehi kar lo. So, unless I have a positive attitude, I have a positive belief that yes, they can, they will not, they will not. So, I should have the attitude, yes, they can, only then they will. That is the attitude they should have. And then laborious, because it requires lot of hard work. You know, teaching children with mental retardation requires hard work. And uh, you have to prepare their teaching learning material, you have to sometimes they have behavioral problems, maybe you have to run after them. Sometimes, you know, they are kind of dirty in the classroom, they do, uh, you know, they pass in the classroom. So, you have to clean them, do all kind of things, take them out. So, it is a lot of hard work and we should be prepared to do that. So, that means to come into this field and to be a special educator, one has to be not only sincere, but also have a good personality, a positive attitude and the approach has to be right. Exact. Positive attitude is a must. Okay. Unless you have positive attitude, whatever you are, you know, there are principles, very knowledgeable, eminent personalities, but if you do not have positive attitude towards people with disability, I do not think you can do any work. Uh, you have to be first convinced that whatever we do will be of some help to these children, because studies have revealed that if whatever little we do with the, our children, with children with disability, it helps in improvement. Studies have revealed. Any little work is done by, uh, you know, uh, people. They could be expert, they could be parents, they could be, uh, you know, uh, who's, uh, the guardians. But whatever uh, work is done, it helps the children to improve with their function. And grow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, basically, it is just all about loving what you are doing and knowing what you are doing also and yeah. enjoying the work yeah. that you are doing. Yeah. Love is fine. We, we all should be love and being loved. Along with that, be firm. firm. You know, love is not just this, whatever you are doing, I love it. No, you, have, you love it. You love your children, but you have to be firm, what we call it. No, do not punish, but be firm. Assertive. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ma'am, what about the role of doctors? 
Okay, we'll come to that now. Now, uh, uh, again, as I said, we all work in teams, you know, the various professionals which are required. Now, doctors have their own role uh, in the habilitation process of person with mental retardation. In fact, the first person where a child goes is the doctor. So, uh, what a doctor is supposed to do? First of all, identify, help the parents identify whether the child is having a disability or not. As you can see on the screen, I will read out what are the responsibilities of a doctor and then I will explain. Uh, role of a doctor, medical examination and assessment and after doing that, uh, prescribing medicine for the complaints given by the patients. It could be any complaint, it could be anything, you know, fever or stomach ache or diarrhea or fever and uh, but it could be other complaints as well which I'll come to you later. Medical counseling, you know, and then providing early intervention services along with other team members, very, very important. If the child is diagnosed at a very early stage that he has some disability, uh, doctor plays a big role. Doctor plays a big role in the sense, first of all, uh, he will help the parents to diagnose what is the disability and second is referring him to the correct place for uh, you know getting those services. So, this is the role of a doctor. Now, if I can say that in various places where sometimes we have seen parents coming to us and telling us that when they come at the age of 10, when the child is at you know 10 years old and we say the child is Down syndrome, didn't you know about it? He said, no, jahan pe hum the, hume kisi doctor ne bataya nahi. So, you know that's what I'm saying. People always go to, parents always go to a doctor whenever they feel something is different or something is deviating from other children, they go to a doctor. So, it is the role of a doctor to give them the correct advice, to give them the correct direction like the I feel this is the problem with the child and this is what he requires. You need to go to this person for this services and this person for that. So, making correct referrals and uh, and sometimes doctor is also involved in doing genetic counseling which is very very important if in a family the, he, they found that they are having disabled children in a row so they, i mean first was disabled and second was also disabled then obviously the doctor is it, you, they, they have to go in for genetic counseling like if there's something something in the family which the child is acquiring so then genet genetic counseling is required there are some tests done uh, whether they can go on with the next pregnancy or not. So, that is the main role of a doctor, medical counseling as I just said. Then providing early intervention, very, very important, Do doctor's role is very, very important. Then you know also as you said, I do not know whether you have heard about, it is a um, condition called cretinism which is a thyroid, thyroid deficiency and it's, it can be cured if it is detected early, you know. So, it is up to a doctor, if they can detect this and it is treated then the child will not be mentally retarded, but if it is not treated then the child may become mentally retarded. So, it is up to the doctors uh, how to do that. So, his role is very, very important and as I just said all of us you and I also whenever we have a complaint, whenever we have some problem, we first thing we think is doctor. So, it is the responsibility of a doctor to tell them that it is now I have diagnosed now the role is more of a rehabilitation worker, rehabilitation professional. It could be a social worker, it could be a special educator, it could be a therapist. So, it is his duty to direct them to the correct place. So, that means since the doctors have the first step, the first role. Yeah, because pediatrician as soon as the child is born, yeah. he, the child is seen by pediatrician. And as soon as the parents detect that there is something that is not you know something that's different, they, right, go something different. they go to a doctor they go to a doctor and yeah. it's very important for the doctor to play the right intervention and the exactly, right counselors exactly, exactly. Okay. because if it is the direction is not given proper then obviously the parents would be misled and that time which is so important uh, you know is wasted somewhere else and you also mentioned a very important point that it may be genetic so, exactly. it is very important to detect that as well, very so important. that further pregnancies exactly. can be avoided exactly. in that case. Especially when we see is going on in the family, there is something in the family when a doctor finds, when they take the medical history. So, if that is the case, the child people are given genetic counseling okay. to avoid the same thing, problems to in the later again. pregnancies. Okay.
So, ma'am, that was about doctors. What about other professionals who are yeah. involved in this? Yeah, another uh, last is left okay. here. Uh, management of uh, uh, any medical problem at early stage. Say, as I said, most of our children have epilepsy, ep epileptic fits. You know, so how to deal with epilepsy? You know, what is the first aid to be given? when epilepsy, uh, when the child is uh, having epilepsy. F they, so that is the role of a doctor to tell the teachers, to tell the people who are around. Uh, so And dealing with autism at an early stage, helping the uh, parents uh, identify children with autism, helping the parents, uh, you know, um, uh, deciding the teaching techniques and other things. So it's all about Diets. early detection. Yeah. Okay. On the next level, yeah, that yeah. the next uh, type of then therapist. As I said, uh, the role of therapist is very uh, important. It could be a speech therapist, th therapist, or it could be occupational therapist. It could be a uh, physiotherapist. Now we come to speech therapist. Role of speech therapist is meets students' communication needs. Second, language development or pronunciation of words. Third is vocabulary. Fourth is reading common signs. Now, as I said, most of our children, they have problems with sounds and uh, speech and language. So now, if you can't speak, if you don't have language, that doesn't mean you can't communicate. And that is the role of a speech therapist. Speech therapist. So what do they do? They teach uh, communication through various ways. Either it could be a non-verbal communication, uh, you know, or it could be you know, if the child is unable to speak, it is non-verbal communication or is using various communication boards or is using gestures or sign language and they all kind of is called, we call total communication. Okay. So all these things are taught by a speech therapist if the child is unable to. But otherwise they work with, they do speech therapy in order making the, helping the child to speak. So that is a speech therapy they do and they are also involved in audiometry finding out what, how much is the hearing loss and uh, what kind of, uh, you know, hearing aid is useful for this child. So all those things, that's the role of a speech therapist. So Mama, so fumbling and stammering also kinds of yeah, examples yeah, yeah. of this. These are all uh, kind of uh, speech and language problems, okay, speech and language problems in uh, people. Uh, so the, again, this is the role of a speech therapist, how to correct these by speech uh, sessions, you know. The yeah. Now the next, so I again I'll read it. The role of a speech therapist: meeting students' communication needs, ताकि उसको जिस तरह से भी communication बच्चा कर पाएगा, वो उसको provide करना, and उसका जो है उसकी language development करना by giving sessions in speech therapy, vocabulary को develop करना by making all kind of you know aids for him. Reading common signs, you know, and any like if the child is unable to speak, then we teach them signs how to communicate to people. So we go on to the next therapist that is the role of a physiotherapist. Now, what is the role of a physiotherapist? As you can see on the screen, assess students' needs to provide interventions related to gross motor skills. Then interpret information about a student's physical needs that has been provided by a physician. Next, uh, to students with disability, a physiotherapist provide direct training in large muscle movement and control. Next, they monitor students' needs related to how they should be positioned, whether in wheelchair or on floor, how their physical needs are affecting educational needs. So this is the role of a physiotherapist. We go one by one. So basically, you know, physiotherapists are involved in assessing the uh, large uh, muscles skills like gross motor skills. In other words, like they are responsible for assessing how well uh, uh, you know he is uh, walking, his gait, his balance, you know, he is working on these things, eye hand coordination, you know all those things if the child is having a problem, muscle power if the child is having problem in holding a pen muscles are weak, so providing, uh, you know, uh, help in strengthening, uh, tone, toning of his muscles and all those things. So that is the role of a physiotherapist. Why he does all that is so that he, he can, uh, he doesn't, he can make use of the classroom teaching. 
So, all these problems does not interfere in his learning problem, he provides some kind of support, some kind of uh, help in form of exercise or whatever, extra support or extra adapted uh, you know um, equipment. Uh, so, the fun the role is that the child is able to apni class mein jo hai wo apni to be as normal as the other kids uh, as he can uh, be. Uh, yeah, he can make maximum benefit of the classroom yeah. teaching. Ye maksad hamara ye hai. So, I think uh, and then obviously har bache ko assess karna, dekhna ki usko koi physical problem to nahi hai, jo uski learning ko interfere kar rahi hai. So, uh, aksar on and off as physiotherapist jo hai, unki assess karte rete hai, unki physical needs ko or karte rete hai ki wo kya problem hai, kya nahi problem hai. That's what they keep doing. So, that means we just discussed about the th therapists, that is the speech therapist who emphasize on not just speech communication but total communication exactly. that words are not the only mode of communication there no, are other yes. modes as well yes. and then the physiotherapists mm -hmm. who emphasize on how the muscular uh, activities large muscles, large yes, muscles yes, and everything yeah, yeah, can yeah. be controlled and yes, held yes, so yeah. that it's beneficial for the child because aapko pata hai positioning in space spatial uh, concepts unless the child is uh, maintaining his balance balance mein problem hai to fir baaki cheeze kaise hongi तो ये सब काम जो है ये फिजियोथेरेपिस्ट देखता है आई हैंड कोऑर्डिनेशन नहीं होगा तो बाकी पढ़ाई लिखाई कैसी होगी ओके तो सो दैट मींस टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द वेरियस सर्विसेज दैट आर प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द मेंटल रिटार्डेशन पेशेंट्स द वेरियस प्रोफेशनल्स दैट आर इन्वॉल्वड इन दिस डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस द स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स द साइकोलॉजिस्ट्स द स्पीच थेरेपिस्ट्स एज़ वेल एज़ द फिजियोथेरेपिस्ट्स we'll move ahead with the other professionals but now it's time for a short break so see you after the break The state of knowledge exists. The will, the capacity and method are usually the problem. Mansik Mandata ek aisi viklangta hai jo 18 varsh ki ayu se purv kabhi bhi ho sakti hai. Jis mein vyavhar anukulta mein kami evam buddhi kshamta 70 pratishat se kam hoti hai. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Bharatiya Punarvas Parishad Dwara, Desh Bharme Panjikrit Kendra, is baat ko pramanit karte hain. NIMH Pradeshik Kendra, Nai Dilli, ek aisa hi kendra hai, jahan chhatro ko prashikshan diya jata hai. जिसके उपरांत वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों की सेवा में नियुक्त होते हैं क्लासरूम टीचिंग ग्रुप टीचिंग एवं भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद के नव शिखर चैनल पर प्रसारित टेली कॉन्फ्रेंसिस द्वारा संबंधित विषयों पर विस्तार पूर्वक ज्ञान दिया जाता है मेडिकल Occupational Therapy, Physiotherapy, Speech Therapy, Psychology और Special Education जैसे क्षेत्रों में छात्रों को प्रशिक्षित किया जाता है। प्रयोगात्मक अनुभव एवं अभ्यास के लिए टीचर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के उपरांत छात्रों को मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के साथ कक्षाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है और इंडिविजुअलाइज्ड एजुकेशन प्लान का भी आधार बनाया जाता है जिससे वे संपूर्ण शिक्षा 
एवं चिकित्सा शैली को समझ सकें इस पूरे प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम के दौरान विद्यार्थी जर्नल्स न्यूज लेटर्स पेरियोडिकल्स चार्ट मॉडल्स कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग एवं टेक्स्ट बुक्स का उपयोग कर सकते हैं कहते हैं कीप योर फेस टू द सनशाइन एंड यू कैन नॉट सी द शेडो इसी बात को ध्यान में रखते हुए विद्यार्थियों को सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है जहां वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के लिए निरीक्षण प्रशिक्षण एवं अनुसंधान का दायित्व संभालते हैं और इसके पश्चात ये विद्यार्थी इस प्रशिक्षण का उपयोग मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के सामाजिक एवं शैक्षणिक उत्थान एवं विकास में करते हैं और एक लक्ष्य की ओर आगे बढ़ते हैं और फिर लक्ष्य कितना ही दूर हो फासला नजरों का धोखा भी तो हो सकता है वो मिले या ना मिले हाथ बढ़ाकर देखो वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द रोल ऑफ प्रोफेशनल्स इन मेंटल रिटार्डेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द साइकोलॉजिस्ट द स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स एंड नाउ वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द थेरेपिस्ट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट स्पीच थेरेपिस्ट एंड द फिजियोथेरेपिस्ट नाउ वी कम टू ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपिस्ट नाउ लेट अस सी द रोल ऑफ ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपिस्ट सी ऑन द स्क्रीन ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपिस्ट आर कंसर्न विद द फाइन मोटर स्किल्स या दे असेस स्टूडेंट्स यूज ऑफ देयर हैंड्स एंड फिंगर्स then they develop and implement plans for improving their motor skills so what we are basically saying you know occupational therapist are generally they are uh, uh, associated with improving their hand functions now unless their hand functions are working in order obviously the students will have problems in their classroom to classroom mein kisi bhi tarah ki problem ho sakti hai unko pencil pakadne mein khelne mein यू नो और अपने लिखने में और अपने पढ़ने में तो हैंड फंक्शन हैंड फंक्शन किसी भी तरह का हैंड फंक्शन है बॉल थ्रो करनी है यू you नो know, और इस तरह के बीड्स को वो करना है कॉपी में लिखना है वो बनानी है बोट बनानी है विद दिस थिंग आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट खेलना है कुछ भी करना है तो हैंड फंक्शन जो है uh should be in order and that is a function of occupational therapist because unless the small pincer grasp is in order obviously you will not be able to do anything what you are supposed to do with your hands and most of the study is done with your hands so ot plays uh, occupational therapist play a big role in this shall we go on to the next next is social worker social worker most of the school they have social workers now what is the role of a social worker as you can see on the screen you know they help in building a liaison between school and family there's the link between the school and the family and uh, wo school aur family mein liaison banate hain aur uske baad wo kai bari home visits bhi karte hain kyunki kai bari aisa hota hai ki samajh nahi aati hai ki bachcha school mein problem kyun kar raha hai maa kuch keh rahi hai bachcha kuch keh raha hai to wo ghar mein ja ke dekhte hain ki home mein kuch problem to nahi hai ghar mein kuch aisi baat to nahi hai pehle main sara pad deti hu ek baar fir se main aapko batati hu then case history taking and serving as a case manager the next is available to need of the students then giving information regarding government schemes benefits and concessions to jaisa ki maine aapko pehle bataya ki social worker ka jo role hai wo bahut important hai sabko pata hai ki bacche ke sath hum kaam tabhi acche se kar sakte hain jab tak जबकि हम फैमिली को भी इन्वॉल्व करें अगर हम फैमिली को इन्वॉल्व नहीं करते हैं सिर्फ बच्चे के साथ काम करते हैं तो हमारा करा हुआ जो काम है वो इतना अहमियत नहीं रखता है उसकी इतनी वो फ़ायदा नहीं हो पाता है एंड नाउ इवन द रिसर्च हैव शोन कि भाई अगर आप बच्चे के साथ काम करते हो तो फैमिली के साथ काम करना भी उतना ही इम्पोर्टेंट है जितना कि बच्चे के साथ तो तो फैमिली ओरिएंटेड सर्विसेज आजकल ज़्यादा चलता है राधा दिन चाइल्ड ओरिएंटेड सर्विसेज तो जब अब ये फैमिली के साथ लिंक रखना बड़ा ज़रूरी है कि ये जो फैमिली है उनका रोल क्या है बच्चे के साथ कैसा चल रहा है हाउ दे आर बिहेविंग यू नॉट ये सब जो है ये सोशल वर्कर देखता है कि फैमिली में पेरेंट और माँ का कैसे है और जो अदर एक्सटेंडेड फैमिली है इन लॉज हैं या 
ब्रदर सिस्टर हैं या उसके ब्रदर सिस्टर हैं मदर एंड फादर के वो भी अगर रह रहे हैं तो उनके साथ ये बच्चे का कैसा है व्यवहार और क्या कौन किस उस किसका व्यवहार इसके सीखने में इंटरफेयर कर रहा है सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स आई मीन वॉट एवर इज़ हेम्परिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ अ चाइल्ड और लर्निंग ऑफ अ चाइल्ड द सोशल वर्कर टेक कीप्स ट्रैक ऑफ दैट और फिर मैंने कहा अगर जरूरत पड़ती है तो वो होम विजिट भी करती हैं अगर जरूरत पड़े एंड देन दूसरी बात मैंने आपको कही कि किसी भी तरह की कोई प्रॉब्लम होती है हमारे पेरेंट्स को या टीचर्स को या कोई जैसे कि पेरेंट्स को कभी डॉक्टर के पास दिखाना है बच्चे को कभी चोट लग गई या डॉक्टर को पास दिखाना है तो सोशल वर्कर वो अरेंज करेगा विजिट क्या है क्या नहीं और अगर किसी भी तरह की जब बच्चा आता है सबसे पहले सोशल वर्कर के पास ही आता है क्योंकि हिस्ट्री टेकिंग जो है दैट इज़ अ रूल ऑफ ये सोशल uh, वर्कर कि उसकी मेडिकल हिस्ट्री क्या है जो बच्चे की नेटल uh, हिस्ट्री क्या थी जब बच्चा पैदा हुआ तो क्या था और जो एजुकेशनल हिस्ट्री क्या है फैमिली हिस्ट्री क्या है ऑल काइंड ऑफ यू नो जो हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉर्नर्स जो है ये हमारा जो है सोशल वर्कर का काम होता है कि वो उसकी उसको हम कहते हैं कि जो केस हिस्ट्री रिकॉर्ड वो भरती हैं केस हिस्ट्री और फिर जाके फिर वो देखती है कि अब इसको कहाँ जाना है कि आई क्यू सेस करानी है तो वो फिर आई क्यू के लिए भेज देगी और अगर उसको थेरेपी की भी ज़रूरत है तो ओ टी पी टी के लिए भेज देगी और बाद में जब ये सब हो जाएगा तो ये सब का बना के वो एक क्लास टीचर जिसकी क्लास में स्पेशल एजुकेटर की क्लास में बच्चा है उनको ये सारा बता देती हैं कि ये बच्चे को क्या क्या ज़रूरी है और आपको क्या क्या करना है एंड एंड दे अब सोशल वर्कर इज ऑलवेज अवेलेबल टू एनी प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट कभी इमोशनल प्रॉब्लम हो गई कभी कोई सोशल प्रॉब्लम हो गई आज मेरे को मम्मी ने डांट दिया तो मुझे बहुत बुरा लग रहा है तो सोशल वर्कर हमेशा उसको काउंसलिंग करने के लिए तैयार रहती हैं कई स्कूलों में सोशल वर्कर्स होते हैं कई स्कूलों में काउंसलर्स होते हैं एंड दे प्ले द सेम रोल तो उनको किसी भी तरह की प्रॉब्लम है चाहे कोई फिजिकल प्रॉब्लम इमोशनल प्रॉब्लम दे कैन गेट इन टच विद द सोशल वर्कर and they accordingly give help and another thing which social workers are uh, doing in special schools is they provide help and they provide uh, information to all the parents like what are the various benefits uh, available from the government so that they can get those benefits to ye bahut hi important information uh, jo hoti hai ye social worker जो है बताती कौन कौन से बेनिफिट्स मिल सकते हैं क्या आपको टैक्स uh, बेनिफिट हो सकता है जिनका बच्चा यू नो मेंटली हैंडीकैप है और अगर टैक्स हो सकता है तो कितना टैक्स मिलेगा उनको उनको क्या पेपर्स चाहिए कौन सा पेपर भरना होगा कौन कौन सी मिनिस्ट्री में जाना होगा ऑल दोज ऑल दोज थिंग्स और बच्चे के लिए क्या क्या बेनिफिट्स अवेलेबल हैं बच्चे को किस तरह का स्कॉलरशिप मिल सकता है बच्चे को किस तरह की फाइनेंशियल एड मिल सकती है इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स अ सोशल वर्कर प्रोवाइड्स टू द फैमिली ऑफ अ डिसबल्ड चाइल्ड सो दैट मीन्स अ सोशल वर्कर हैज बेसिकली इज अ ब्रिज बिटवीन द स्कूल एंड द फैमिलीज एंड एंड द कम्युनिटी ओके एंड द टू केटर टू ऑल द इमोशनल सोशल नीड्स ऑफ द पेशेंट एग्जैक्ट एंड बी अ सोर्स ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन एज वेल अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज एंड एवरीथिंग एल्स इन्वॉल्व इन दिस ओके कई बार क्या होता है साइकोलॉजिस्ट इज बिजी विद हर वर्क असेसमेंट एंड बिहेवियल प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस दैट बट सोशल वर्कर उनको आके बताती है कि जो आप प्रोग्राम बच्चे को बिहेवियल प्रॉब्लम इसलिए कम नहीं हो रही बिकॉज देर इज you know it's a single family or maybe there's a rift between the husband and wife because she has found that because they undergo the case studies exactly so it is so all are involved yeah now we go on to the next profession uh, that is a a uh, counselor as i said in some schools there are social workers and some schools there are counselors counselors are almost doing the same job but in uh, counselors are appointed in regular schools in all regular schools actually uh, what is their job let us uh, see on the screen most often they advise high school students in the disability area they assess students self concept motivation attitude towards school peers and teachers for teachers they have uh, they suggest ways to help their students to deal with disability for students they arrange group sessions quiz or many other group work uh, regarding how to interact with peers who have disability 
so as i said you know social uh, counselors first of all they have a role at uh, at a high level with uh, students in regular schools who are studying in 11th and 12th to guide them for various career options so that is the main job of a counselor but in case in schools if there are disabled children also then counselor's job is to provide help to disabled children as well now what is the help they provide they are the, they do coordination with the teachers they also do coordination with the other students who are called normal so they provide information and also how to deal with these children with disability to other children who are having normal iq that is number 1 number 2 is that um, now awareness is you know students are not they don't get information in the form of lectures now counselors they arrange group work group sessions you know quiz and the quiz will be on a topic like what do you think uh, that uh, we should show empathy a uh, sympathy or empathy towards people with mental retardation so have a quiz on this so some people will talk for it some people will talk against, against it now it is up to the students you now this is how their attitude will be formed so without any lecture the students have understood the message a counselor was about to give so this is the role, role of a counselor you know making aware um, other people in the their peers their you know teachers like what are the needs of these children and how they should behave towards these children ma'am so, we again, just have a question from our, one of our viewers okay. so can can we take that yeah. question okay hello hello yeah yeah, yeah good afternoon ma'am yes good afternoon ma'am i just need to ask if the social workers do they how can we contact to a social worker okay ma'am uh, she wants to ask how can we contact the social workers uh probably she's trying to ask that what is the source of reaching out to the social workers or well, where exactly to look out for them okay Ex- actually in all the school social workers are there okay but if they don't have one so they must be having a counselor or somebody in the school w- would have been given this kind of responsibility okay i hope uh, the question has yeah. been answered this is up to the schools in most of the schools they have and if they don't then obviously they are missing on these things okay yeah It's so basically we should team. look out to the schools and go exactly. and inquire at the schools that where exactly. what are the numbers and the details of the social workers yeah okay. most of the schools appoint either a social worker or a counselor all oh, right shall we go on to the next yeah. uh, professional that is the role of a vocational instructor let's see on the screen uh, what we have to say about vocational instructor they are responsible for job identification placement and follow up second for training in vocations after assessing the aptitude and interest of the client next programming for persons with mental retardation in the various uh, vocations they are interested in then vocational counseling so what we are trying to say is after the child has turned 16 now all of us when we turn 16 we are out of the school and we are looking for a vocation or we are going for higher education so in case of our children after 16 17 or 18 we say now the child uh, they, they have been given pre vocational training and now the child is is ready to work in the world of work now here comes the role of a vocational counselor ab aap kisi bhi jagah mein to usko dal nahi sakte ki aap wahan jao naukri kar lo aap lecturer ki naukri kar lo ya aap teacher ki naukri kar lo ya aap nurse ki naukri aap aisa to nahi kar sakte jaisa ki hum sab karte hain ki mera aptitude isme hai mujhe ye naukri karni hai mujhe ye to aise hi hame in bachcho ka bhi aptitude aur interest dekhna padta hai iske liye bhi assessment hoti hai isme assessment functional level ki nahi hoti isme assessment vocational aptitude ki hoti hai तो वो भी हमारे स्टूडेंट्स को सिखाया जाता है उसके लिए भी स्टैंडर्डाइज स्केल्स हैं जिसमें हम ये देखते हैं कि इस पर्टिकुलर बच्चे का एप्टीट्यूड किस में है ये कौन से वोकेशन में फिट बैठेगा तो हमारे वो ड्यूटी किसकी होती है वोकेशनल इंस्ट्रक्टर की और ये अलग से ट्रेंड होते हैं दे आर नॉट स्पेशल एजुकेटेड दे आर ट्रेंड इन डिप्लोमा इन वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग 
डीबीटी uh, कि भाई उनके जो वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग में एक डिप्लोमा होता है दो साल का या एक साल का जिसमें उनको इन्हीं चीज़ों में ट्रेन करा जाता है कि एट दैट स्टूडेंट एट दैट एज तो वो उनका काम ये होता है फिर उनका ये भी काम होता है कि अगर उन, uh, उनको काउंसलिंग देनी कि भाई आपको कौन सा वोकेशन आपको सूट करेगा काउंसलिंग किसके साथ बच्चे के साथ अलॉन्ग विद द फैमिली कि भाई मान लीजिए आपकी फैमिली का कोई अपना ऑलरेडी कोई यू नो कोई बिजनेस है या कोई काम कर रहे हैं या फादर के पास कोई ऐसी जगह है जिसमें ये कोई काम ऐसा कर सकता है फिर ये देखेगा कि उस जॉब में हमारा ये वाला बच्चा जो है क्या काम कर पाएगा से फॉर एग्जांपल इफ़ यू हैव अ फैक्ट्री तो क्या ये बच्चा कोई चीज़ों को ला एंट्री कर पाएगा कोई चीज़ आ रही है तो एंट्री करना काम है या कोई चीज़ उठा के कहीं पर ड्रग देगा या यू नट्स एंड बोल्ट्स या कुछ धोएगा क्लीन करेगा वट इफ़ इज़ वर्किंग इन अ डॉक्टर्स क्लिनिक दैन मे बी यू नो वॉट कैंड ऑफ वर्क विल ही बी डूइंग वेदर इट इज़ क्लीनिंग द यूटेंसिल या क्लिनिक द क्लिनिक यू नो तो ये डिपेंड करता है ये सब क्या कौन करेगा वोकेशनल इंस्ट्रक्टर करेगा और फिर जब उसको पता चल जाएगा कि वो काम कर सकता है तो उसके लिए वो प्रोग्राम भी बनाएगा ताकि वो इसमें उस काम को उसको ट्रेन कर सके विद बिफोर सेंडिंग हिम टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ वर्क तो ये काम वोकेशनल इंस्ट्रक्टर का होता है सो दैट मीन्स विच इज डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द काउंसलर्स हु आर मेनली फॉर द एजुकेशनल काउंसलिंग एंड टू डिसाइड हाउ द चाइल्ड कैन मूव अप विद द एजुकेशनल एडर and then about the vocational instructors or if not education then what else what, what are the other uh, the, chi- the child is fit for are the professions yeah. that the child can work in right right all lovely. right i am actually uh, personally i came across an interview uh, uh, an article recently that said that there was a child who had a mental disability and he scored more than 90% in his boards so he has got which problem sorry I he had a mental disability okay, okay. i'm not sure of what disability exactly but okay. then he had a mental problem and he got more than 90% in his boards so when was it Rece- i okay, mean when okay. the results were be, out so but it could be i don't know i would like to know the detail uh, but some of the children as i said they can't go uh, they can't uh, do the C- normal cbsc system so we have another system for their schooling which is called nios okay. so slow learner all the, the, the children who are having mild mental retardation or children of borderline cases you know they can in nios we have flexibility they can select subjects of their choice if they can't do maths they can not choose that and they can pass those exams in, over a span of so many years like maybe 5 years so that flexibility is there and they are also given some kind of uh, concessions also like you can get more time or you will get more hours um, um, some scribe or whatever so what i'm saying Uh, maybe that and we have to know the details but some of our children have gone uh, past nios ka 10th and 12th so basically it's most important We for uh, what is his level but okay. it depends what what level was he at yeah so it's very important to be aware of all the options available, options available so that you can go into what is suited best for exactly. you exactly so cbs okay. is not the only option okay. there are other options so these things social worker can tell them yeah. right so then uh, you know if sometimes in very few schools uh, so far this professional we have talked about most of the schools have those and this should have otherwise it's not a complete team as mm-hmm. i said a role of all the professional different right for a child so and the child requires all those input so unless they are there if they are not there then the job who will take care so that means there is something missing but in some cases you know if there are people with visual impairment so we have mobility specialist we call in order to train the people with visual disability uh, impairment for mobility so they are called mobility specialist as you can see on the screen they help students with visual impairment uh, how to become familiar with their assignment how to travel from place to place uh, you know uh, keeping in view their safety to ye sab cheeze jo hai ye मोबिलिटी स्पेशलिस्ट बताते हैं इसी तरह से कई स्कूलों में साइन लैंग्वेज इंटरप्रेटर होते हैं आपने देखा होगा वेर एवर देर इज़ अ बिग फंक्शन यू नो जो डिसेबल्ड लोगों के लिए होता है वहाँ पे इंटरप्रेटर भी होता है तो जो भी मिनिस्टर कह रहा है या कोई और एक्सपर्ट कह रहा है दैट इज़ इंटरप्रेटेड इन साइन लैंग्वेज बिकॉज अवर चिल्ड्रन विद हेयरिंग इम्पेयरमेंट दे कैन दे कॉन्ट हेयर दे कैन सी दिस दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस साइन तो कई जगह पर ये तो क्या होता है तो शुरू से इनको ये सिखाई जाती है तो क्या होता है जो क्लासरूम में टीचर कर रही है इंटरप्रेटर का काम है कि वो साइन लैंग्वेज में साथ साथ इस बच्चे के लिए उसको रिले करती जाए सो एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द रोल ऑफ अ साइन लैंग्वेज इंटरप्रेटर इज कम्युनिकेशन लिंक फॉर स्टूडेंट्स विद हेयरिंग इम्पेयरमेंट एंड दे इंटरप्रेट वट इंस्ट्रक्शन द टीचर इज गिविंग इन द क्लासरूम एंड द रिलेट टू द स्टूडेंट 
so this is the this is how students are helped they do not miss what a teacher has said because of their hearing problem uh, and uh, they have understood whatever because so they act it was as a media of communication between the teachers and the students exactly okay. so they are kind of it's a link yeah. you said very rightly yes okay right now we go on to the next role of administrators let's not miss them because in the school administrators play a big role whatever we all are doing we are doing under them okay. now if an administrator doesn't have a positive attitude toward disability then whole thing will not be successful the whole process will not be successful right as you have seen in various schools principals are not sensitive towards disability their children with disability are not admitted sometime but now they can't do that let me say that also now with this uh, disability act we are bound by uh, you know legally bound by an act disability act and uh, uncrpd also so they can't say no but generally i'm saying if the principal is not a willing uh, topmost administrator then obviously whatever we are doing is of no value role of administrators let us understand what is the role of administrator school principal or the team leaders are uh, administrators who are likely to participate actively in the education of student with disability right so they are the administrators and they will offer knowledge about school and special education they are the people who will offer knowledge to the community to various people who ever is visiting about their school and special education in their school so they should have all those qualities in them their administrators will assist the multidisciplinary team in determining student eligibility for services and exploring strategies for meeting their needs then address parents concern so administrator role is very big first of all when a parent come they will visit the principal and then again the principal will decide on what services the child will require and the child will be sent for various services so uh, you can all understand that what is the role of a good administrator so administrators uh, should have a positive attitude should have sensitivity towards this field only then they will allow all these things uh, uh, they will allow the parents to make use of the services which are existing in the school so for a person to become an administrator i think he has to go down from the bottom level to see the root level first and then go up or is it that uh, i then, mean how uh, there are eligibility criteria okay. for the principals and for the heads of the school okay. if they fulfill that and obviously there is one this condition if they are working if they are special school administrators then obviously one of the condition is that you have undergone this training and all okay. so eligibility criteria is laid and accordingly they are appointed now parents they are the most important most important yeah. yeah but most neg neglected also i would say in some schools now let us first uh, understand what are their role and then we will discuss their role is provide input on their child's strength and needs provide help in deciding if the child has a disability next assist in writing goals and objectives for their child's educational program then participation in delivery instruction meaning teaching to the child next working with school, school professionals to resolve behavioral and academic problems so as we can understand and we have just uh, seen on the screen that their role is a big role but as we said earlier that they have to first accept the child only then they can play this role first of all they have to help the professional in understanding that their child has a disability in other words they have to give correct information yeah. you know some of the parents that don't give correct information out of embarrassment exactly. or out of fear stigma fear yeah. embarrassment what others will think but uh, but it's no longer uh, it's all depends upon if you keep on hiding then this stigma will never be if if people see disabled children right from the beginning when they are small then we are, we will all get used to seeing them then it will not be a stigma so this is the, the 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 help we give to the parents so earlier the better and now you will see is gradually you know it is disappearing so uh, they have to tell very clearly what are the strengths and what are the problem they are facing ghar mein to koi problem hi nahi hai ji ghar pe to kuch bhi nahi hai yahi pe problem hai so for fir hum kaise pata chalega to par wo unka apne reasons hai we can't blame them they have their own reasons so we have to work with them very Patient uh, patiently way. very nicely very systematically uh, you know to wo fir hame we have to tell them that we are with, with them. them yeah 
we understand, we empathize them, right? तो ये सब आते हैं और पेरेंट्स फिर जब बताते हैं तो उनका रोल क्या हो जाता है उनका रोल यहाँ पे तो अभी नहीं आया है बट बाहर जैसे देखा पेरेंट्स आर पार्ट ऑफ द टीम वेन वी राइट देर आई पी तो अगर पेरेंट कहता है कि मेरे बच्चे को मेरे हिसाब से ये पहले सिखा दीजिए बिकॉज आई फील दैट इज मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर हिम द टीम हैज़ टू कंसिडर दैट सो हेयर ऑल्सो वी स्पेंड लॉट ऑफ टाइम फॉर पेरेंट्स and we have pta meetings every now and then so that they can participate actively um, we do care about those things so they they also are part and parcel of resolving their academic problems and behavioral problem kyunki jo bhi special educator school mein kar raha hai jo bhi psychologist school mein kar raha hai wo parents ko bhi ghar mein karna hai taki wohi method rahe method farak na ho jaye kyunki agar method farak ho jayega to obviously bachcha confuse ho jayega ki main iski baat sunu ya uski baat sunu to isliye unko ek dusre ke sath coordination link bana ke rehna hai taki ek dusre ke sath communication mein rehna hai ki aap kaun sa method use kar rahe ho taki main wohi method इन बच्चों के साथ यूज करूं। नाउ रोल ऑफ पेरेंट्स जब हमने कहा तो पेरेंट्स को इन्वॉल्व करने के बहुत सारे फायदे हैं हम उसकी भी बात कर लें सो दैट मीन्स इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू काउंसिल द पेरेंट्स एज वेल नॉट जस्ट द चाइल्ड बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू काउंसिल द पेरेंट्स एज वेल सो दैट द पेरेंट्स कैन ऑल्सो डील विद द चाइल्ड साइमल्टेनियसली बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट तो पेरेंट्स को इन्वॉल्वमेंट इन्वॉल्व करने के फायदे बहुत है नुकसान क्या है बहुत कम है पर फायदे ज़्यादा है ओके राइट हाँ तो कौन कौन से फायदे हैं अब जो इंटरवेंशन प्रोग्राम कैन बी कैरिड होम फॉर फर्दर प्रैक्टिस एंड सप्लीमेंट्री टीचिंग दिस टेंडेंस द बिहेवियर ऑफ अ चाइल्ड एंड इंक्रीजिंग द इंक्रीज द रेट ऑफ लर्निंग नेक्स्ट पेरेंट्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट इंक्रीज द पर्सनल वर्थ एंड सेंस ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन Parents begin to feel more responsible for the fulfilment of their child's needs and requirements. Then parents understand their child better than anyone else. This knowledge can be utilized by the teachers to select appropriate and functional behavioral objectives for teaching the child with mental handicap. So these are the few uh, uh, you know advantages which I have listed okay. um, uh, uh, working with the parents. जैसे कि मैंने बताया सबसे बड़ी एडवांटेज ये है बच्चा घर में ज़्यादा देर के लिए रहता है एज़ कम्पेयर टू और आई मैं कहूँ सेम टाइम बताता है तो पेरेंट्स की भी उतनी ही रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है जितनी कि टीचर है और दूसरी बात एज आई जस्ट सेट कि वो ट्रांसफॉर्म ट्रांसफ़र uh, करते हैं लर्निंग घर से बाहर और बाहर करेंगे मतलब स्कूल से घर और घर से बाहर तो अगर स्कूल से ठीक लर्निंग घर पे जाइए है तो वही लर्निंग बाहर कम्युनिटी में भी होगी तो ये सबसे बड़ा फ़ायदा है दूसरा क्या है नेचुरल सेटिंग में भी लर्निंग हो रही है अदर तीसरा क्या है कि हमने ये देखा है और हम ये कह नहीं रहे हैं स्टडीज़ ने हमें बताया है रिसर्च ने हमें बताया है आई आई हैव ऑल्सो डन रिसर्च विद द सिबलिंग्स एंड पेरेंट्स एंड वॉट वी हैव फाउंड दैट इफ़ यू वर्क विद द पेरेंट्स एंड एज अगेंस्ट इफ यू डोंट वर्क विद द पेरेंट्स उनको अलग छोड़ दो और आप खुद काम करते रहो तो पेरेंट्स फील्स लेफ्ट आउट एंड दे डोंट फील पार्ट ऑफ द चाइल्ड बट इफ यू इन्वॉल्व दैम दे फील वेरी गुड दे फील एक तो कि उनकी वर्थ महसूस हुई है हमें लाइक दे आर वर्थ डूइंग समथिंग एंड दे आर इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोग्राम ऑफ द चाइल्ड मतलब दे आर पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऑफ द चाइल्ड तो वो क्या कहते हैं कि आई एम कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू वर्ड्स दिस चाइल्ड तो अगर नहीं करते तो उनको वही फीलिंग आती है आई एम गुड फॉर नथिंग माई चाइल्ड कैन डू नथिंग आई कैन डू एनी As a parent, I can't do anything. They keep on, you know, अपने आप को so there is more of a satisfaction level also in the parents when they're contributing towards exactly. the child's growth. Exactly. The parents have revealed that in okay. the studies. You know, we feel much better when we are involved in the program as against when we are not involved in the program. Our self concept, our self, जो uh, image. Uh, 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 बूस्ट इज यू नो बूस्ट अप हो जाती है कि हम भी जैसे हम पेरेंट्स की तो एक ख्वाहिश होती है उनका एक वो होता है क्या कि डिज़ायर डिज़ाय चाइल्ड आई शुड आई शुड बी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर टूवर्ड्स माई चाइल्ड्स ग्रोथ टूवर्ड्स माई चाइल्ड दिस थिंग हमारे इंडियन पेरेंट्स की तो एक ये बहुत खासी है सो दे फील दे कम्प्लीटिंग द ड्यूटीज बाय कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग सो प्रोफेशनल शुड टेक केयर ऑफ दोज थिंग ये बात है और जैसा कि मैंने बताया पेरेंट्स से ज़्यादा कोई भी नहीं अच्छा समझ सकता बच्चे को okay. तो इस पेरेंट्स रोल तो इसलिए पेरेंट्स को इन्वॉल्व करना बहुत ज़रूरी है ताकि हमें बच्चे के बारे में सही इन्फॉर्मेशन मिल सके 
so yeah. now we have discussed about all the various professionals like the psychologists the therapists the counselors the vocational instructors doctors and the parents who are all very important in their respective areas in the development of the mental retarded child so we'll continue with our discussion today but now it's time for a short break so see you after a break हम होंगे काम हम होंगे काम हम होंगे काम एक दिन हो मन में है विश्वास पूरा है विश्वास हम होंगे काम एक दिन we shall overcome we shall overcome we shall overcome someday oh deep in my heart i do believe that we shall overcome someday we shall overcome someday we shall overcome someday The chief handicap of the blindness is not blindness but the attitude of seeing people towards them. आइए जानने और समझने की कोशिश करते हैं कि बधिरांधता यानी डेफ ब्लाइंडनेस क्या है बधिरांधता एक स्थिति है जिसमें दृष्टिहीनता एवं सुनने की शक्ति में कमी आती है तथा जिससे विचारों के आदान प्रदान और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं की पूर्ति में समस्या उत्पन्न होती है बलराम एक नौ साल का बधिरांत बच्चा है वो एक प्री मैच्योर बच्चा है जिसका शारीरिक विकास उसकी आयु के अनुरूप नहीं हुआ था वो एक निम्न वर्गीय श्रेणी से संबंध रखता है तथा पांच साल से लगातार नेशनल एसोसिएशन फॉर ब्लाइंड दिल्ली के प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम से संलग्न है इन पांच सालों के अंतर्गत उसे रोजमर्रा के कामों में हलन चलन में उसकी शैक्षणिक जरूरतों के अनुसार संप्रेषण द्वारा प्रशिक्षण दिया गया है जिससे वो इन सब क्रियाओं में स्वावलंबी बन सके बलराम बिना किसी सहायता के चाकू से फलों को काट सकता है उनके छिलकों को कूड़ेदान में डाल सकता है अपने बर्तनों को खुद साफ कर सकता है उन्हें सही जगह पर रख सकता है सही बर्तनों का चयन करके खुद खाना खाता है एवं पानी की बोतल निकालकर पानी भी पीता है इन सभी क्रियाओं में वो टेक्चुअल साइन लैंग्वेज से निर्देशों को ग्रहण करता है और अपने भावों को व्यक्त करता है
टेलर फ्रेम और ब्रेलर द्वारा गणित पठन लेखन में भी प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है सभी बच्चों की तरह उसका भी एक मनपसंद खेल है उसे सेलफोन को अपने कानों पर लगाकर उसका कंपन महसूस करना अच्छा लगता है कहा जाता है वॉकिंग विद अ फ्रेंड इन डार्क इज बेटर देन वॉकिंग अलोन इन लाइट कहने का तात्पर्य है कि वो लॉन्ग केन ट्रेवल टेक्टाइल पाथ ट्रेलिंग और लैंडमार्क्स द्वारा हलन चलन में भी सक्षम है और व्यायाम संबंधी क्रियाएं जैसे ट्रेडमिल स्टैटिक साइकिल का स्वचालन भी कर सकता है कहा गया है द बेस्ट एंड मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल थिंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड कैन नॉट बी सीन और इवन टच दे मस्ट बी फेल्ट विद द हार्ट Welcome back after the break. Our discussion of today was about the role of professionals in the development of mental retardation. So now we were discussing about the role of the parents. They are always uh, wanting to contribute towards the growth of their children. So ma'am what about the role of teachers towards the parents? Exactly. That's what I wanted to tell you that even teachers have a great role towards parents. So let us uh, first of all see what is the teacher's role towards parents as you can see on the screen. they impart information about the child's condition explain the nature causes and management techniques for children with mental handicap help them develop right attitude toward their child with mental handicap elaborate the role of parents in the training and rehabilitation of these children make plans and programs for teaching appropriate behaviors to the child at home as you can see on the screen it is self explanatory uh, teachers also have a great role towards parents first of all they have to uh, encourage the parents to participate in the training program of their child second they also have to involve in everything not that sometimes what happens you know teachers decide on their own what is required for their child and they start teaching the what is required for the child so parents always feel that they are not part and parcel of the school program सो टीचर्स शुड ऑलवेज टेक केयर दैट पेरेंट्स को वो बुला के या फ़ोन पे बताए कि मैं ये पढ़ा रही हूँ और ऐसा आपने भी घर में पढ़ाना है और दूसरी बात उनको जो है बताना चाहिए हमेशा कि कॉजेज़ क्या होते हैं मेंटल रिटारेशन होती क्या है इनके करेक्टरिस्टिक्स क्या होते हैं ऐसा होगा तो आपको कोई चिंता की बात नहीं है बच्चा ऐसे करेगा तो आपको चिंता की बात नहीं है आपको बल्कि जानना है कि अगर बच्चा ऐसे करेगा तो मुझे क्या करना है और उनको ये भी बताना है कि बच्चे के लिए स्कूल में आना कितना ज़रूरी है आपको स्कूल में आना कितना ज़रूरी है ये सब बातें पेरेंट्स को बतानी पड़ेंगी हम क्या पढ़ा रहे हैं हम कैसे पढ़ा रहे हैं और इस ये सब जो है उनको पेरेंट्स को बताना पड़ेगा सो दैट मीन्स इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द पेरेंट्स एंड द टीचर्स टू बी एक्टिवली इन्वॉल्व इन पार्टिसिपेटिव विद ईच अदर बड़ा जरूरी नॉट जस्ट द चाइल्ड बट इंटरक्शन अमंग्स द टीचर्स एंड पेरेंट्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बड़ा जरूरी है तो अभी हमने आपने अभी जब हमने सुबह से जो डिस्कशन करी है बहुत सारे प्रोफेशनस की बात करी है राइट प्रोफेशनस बहुत सारे प्रोफेशनल इन्वॉल्व है इन ट्रेनिंग पर्सन विद मेंटल रिटारेशन पर अभी आप जो बात कर रहे हो अभी बीच बीच में हम जो ये बात कर रहे हैं हम ये कह रहे हैं कि पेरेंट्स को टीचर के साथ इन्वॉल्वमेंट करनी है साइकोलॉजिस्ट को टीचर्स के साथ इन्वॉल्वमेंट करनी है डॉक्टर को सब सारों के साथ कोऑर्डिनेट करना है सोशल वर्कर को सबके साथ कोऑर्डिनेट करना है स्पेशल एजुकेशन को सबके साथ कोऑर्डिनेट करना है हम बीच बीच में ये भी बातें कर रहे हैं सो वॉट आर वॉट आर वी सेंग वॉट वी आर सेंग दैट इट इज नॉट ओनली नेसेसरी टू हैव टीम वर्क इट इज नॉट ओनली नेसेसरी टू हैव यू नो मल्टी प्रोफेशनल्स इन अ टीम इट इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट टू हैव इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी टीम इन अदर वर्ड्स इट इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट टू शेयर द इंफॉर्मेशन विद ऑल दिस प्रोफेशनल सो दैट वी कैन वर्क विद द चाइल्ड इन होलिस्टिक मैनर 
एक छोटी सी आप आई थिंक माय स्टूडेंट्स आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज कि अगर एक बच्चा आता है और हमारे पास आता है और उसको बहुत सारे प्रोफेशनल्स की जरूरत है क्योंकि उसकी नीड्स बहुत सारी हैं और एक साइकोलॉजिस्ट उसको अपनी तरह से डील कर रहा है और स्पेशल एजुकेटर उसको अपनी पढ़ाने लिखाने के लिए डील कर रहा है डॉक्टर अपनी मेडिकल प्रॉब्लम के लिए डील कर रहा है और थेरेपिस्ट अपनी उसको थेरेपी के लिए डील कर रहा है तो और पेरेंट्स अब उसको घर ले जा रहे हैं तो बच्चा को कहाँ से इनपुट मिल रहे हैं इधर से भी इधर से भी इधर से भी इधर से भी एंड चाइल्ड इज टोटली और मे भी हो सकता है जो इनपुट साइकोलॉजिस्ट ने दिया उसका ओवरलैपिंग स्पेशल एजुकेटर भी माइट बी कंफ्यूजिंग फॉर द चाइल्ड सो और थेरेपिस्ट जो इनपुट दे रहा है वो जरूरी है जो स्पेशल एजुकेशन के लिए टीचर के लिए भी इनपुट जरूरी है सो आई देर देर इज अ डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ सर्विसेज और द चाइल्ड इज टोटली कंफ्यूज कि मुझे तो वहाँ पे ये करा था यहाँ पे भी यही है डुप्लीकेशन हो गया और या उसने तो मुझे ऐसे बताया था और ये टीचर मुझे ऐसे करा रहा है सो देर कुड बी अ बिग यू नो क्यूस तो एक बहुत जो है वो हो सकता है सो प्रोफेशनल्स बहुत सारे चाहिए पर मैं ये हमेशा कहती हूँ प्रोफेशनल्स शुड ऑलवेज वर्क इन अ टीम एंड व्हेन दे वर्क इन अ टीम वी कॉल इट इज़ अ इंटर डिसप्लिनरी टीम ओके वी डोंट कॉल इट इट इज़ अ मल्टी डिसप्लिनरी टीम इट इज़ अ इंटर डिसप्लिनरी टीम व्हेन व्हाट इज़ अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन मल्टीपल मल्टी डिसप्लिनरी टीम एंड इंटर डिसप्लिनरी टीम दिस इज ओनली डिफरेंस इन मल्टीपल डिसप्लिनरी टीम मैनी प्रोफेशनल्स आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द हेबिलिटेशन प्रोग्राम ऑफ अ चाइल्ड in interdisciplinary team many professionals are participating in the team but they are also sharing the information with each other that is the only difference so that a child has just one program which a teacher is implementing in the classroom from so the that various professions all the professionals have to interact with each other to very, very coordinate important. with each other to be harmonious so that the child grasps one thing not various different things one from different sources one plan is prepared for him Okay. Whether it is a therapy, whether it is a speech therapy, a teacher is conducting, teacher is coordinating, special educator, but having input from all these sources. Sources. That okay. is the main. So now, uh, so uh, to wind up, we can say, what are the advantages of multidisciplinary team? I mean interdisciplinary team. Yeah. So just because people are more familiar with multidisciplinary team, I have used that word. But actually speaking, we say interdisciplinary team. Now let us see on the screen. Uh, team. Why? Why we say team? Team meaning we all are working together, together. and sharing information. Team. To team, tabi banegi na together. Together is the word. Team can mutually contribute and evolve better plans and strategies to work with MR. Yeah, it's very clear. Teamwork minimizes the possibility of error and omissions in planning or programming for the child with mental handicap. Right? Multidisciplinary team becomes mutually informed about the varying but complementary roles played by different professionals in the care and management of people with mental retardation. a team approach alone can enable achieving this consistency in the use of behavioral technique with mentally handicapped children in the school or uh, in classroom setting or at home so these are the uh, advantages of working in a interdisciplinary team most important is all of us are sharing all of us are coming to consensus and then planning the program for a child so there are always so, better plans and strategies since everybody is combined and coordinated it's not one pra- brain it is all brain working together together and then there is a consistency a ye plan bana hai ye humne sabne bana hai it is not you made this plan i made this plan and the, this is the plan it will be carried forward when the uh, i mean uh, carried to the next class when he goes to the next class so that the teacher knows what was done earlier So it's more of group effort, not individual, not me, you, I, but it's exactly. we, us exactly. working together. Teamwork. It All is a right. teamwork. Okay. But again, when you work in a team, there have to be conflicts. Exactly. And this was something I also uh-huh. wanted to ask you personally. I mean, you've been working in this field for so long. So have there ever been any disappointments or anything that you felt was not right when you were working? Anything that you felt was lagging? Very often. So how do you deal with it sometimes my colleague will not agree with me sometimes you know i feel why uh, i my uh, you know 
suggestion has not been taken up but that's the advantages of a teamwork you know okay. uh, then we all brainstorm we all discuss we share why i'm saying this these are the reasons then we all agree if the, the is helping the child our ultimate aim is helping the child so we so i have to i can't be stubborn I, there should be if i say no i am correct you are not i have to uh, if you convince me with your logic that this is more appropriate for the child obviously i need to agree then i can't keep my stubbornness with me but we do have these problems all the time but we also have the ability as a team member to sort those opinion so very good question you have asked me there are also uh, points or i would say there are various things which we have to keep in mind Uh, to have a good team work to good in uh, for uh, you know the qualities which a team requires to be a successful so it's very important to keep the ego and prejudice aside when you're deciding and working for this purpose exactly uh, i will just show you qualities that facilitate better good team work this is a problem everywhere but unless we have these qualities our team work will not be successful successful so what are those qualities just look at the screen Number one is flexibility. Very, very important. All of us need to be flexible. वो कहते हैं ना पत्थर की लकीर नहीं है कि जो एक बार कह दिया वो मिटेगी नहीं और हम दिन में आपने देखा होगा कितनी बार बदलते हैं अपने आप को बिकॉज दूसरे से फीडबैक मिली तो अपने आपने डिसीजन बदल दिया आज बच्चे को ये कराना था टाइम टेबल में ये था ये नहीं कराया पर अगर मैं कोई नहीं टाइम टेबल में था कराना ही है पर उससे बच्चे को प्रॉब्लम हो रही है बच्चा फिजिकली नॉट फिट दैट डे एंड यू हैव मेड हिम डू फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज एंड ही फेंटेड आप समझ रहे हो मेरी बात फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी सोशल वर्कर ने आपके आपके ये बताया आके कि चाइल्ड इज वॉमिटिंग सुबह से आप उसको ये नहीं करा आपने कहा नहीं टाइम टेबल में है फिजिकल का पीरियड है होगा ही एंड द चाइल्ड फेंटेड so you cannot be rigid with the child you can never be rigid so flexibility is very very important that we all all professional should have because it's a social field nothing is like two and two is four mm mm-hmm. you understand so yeah. you have to be very very careful sense of mutual respect if you are saying something i should consider it with respect i may not take it because i have a reason then i should with respect i should tell you the reason why i am not taking it why i am not following so that is what that is what is called mutual respect not that i know better than you then tolerance you have to be tolerant towards your colleagues behavior towards the child's behavior towards parents behavior we have to be tolerant if i say why you shouting why you are losing your temper this that i mean let us be tolerant nobody will behave like that unless there is a reason for that so tolerance willingness to share very 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 important even now in our field what we have seen that people have tendency to hide things you know they will not kyun they feel it's a threat if i tell the way i'm doing exercises they will say oh it's not correct but we feel no let us all sit together and see what is right what is wrong let's not have that fear and last of all accept differences with our fellow professional as part of it we all are different we think differently but the best is coming to a consensus that okay. is the quality of a good team coming to a common consensus that is so i would like to say that at the end of it interdisciplinary team is most important uh, interdisciplinary team effort is essential to meet the needs of a special child so basically the crux was that avoid the bias avoid the prejudice every person has to work as a team to coordinate to be harmonious and just to look after the child yeah. and take care of the child yeah. it's not just all the professionals required it is all the professionals are required to work in a team okay that is most important So in the today's topic of discussion we discussed first about the services provided to the mental retardation patients then we discussed about various professionals like psychologists like counselors like vocational instructors like doctors who have the early assessment of the child's disease or the disability then about parents teachers parents it's a condition a mental retardation is not a disease disability yeah, a yeah, condition yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. And the yeah. parents who have the most important role because they are the ones who are supposed to go to the doctors, to go to the counselors, to go to every sp- social worker wherever they can take the child. So it's very important the parents understand, they accept the child, they accept whatever disability the child has, and understand that it's not just a disability. The child is a special child more than that. So and every social worker, every way, every professional involved has to be working in a team. not 
individually. So basically, it's an indisciplinary, interdisciplinary team effort which is required. And ma'am, thank you so much. All your inputs were very beneficial for us. And thank you thank so you. much. Namaskar. That's all for today. Thank you.